Good morning, little nerds. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, a board-certified dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to Pillow Talk Derm, where every Saturday morning we do a pillow talk talking about skincare, the beauty industry, your problems, you name it, we cover it. So subscribe below. With that being said, today we are going to focus on skincare in your 20s. But before we jump in, it is so important to note that your age is not a skin type. And I have said this from day one, and I will continue to say this despite doing a video called Skincare in Your 20s. The reason I repeat this is because in every decade, we all have individual problems that are our biggest problem. And although there are commonalities through each decade, like in your 20s, you might start to have changes in your hormones that show up on your skin. In your 30s, you might start to notice sunspots. In your 40s, you might start to notice more fine lines and wrinkling. In your 50s, you're probably more dehydrated. However, in each decade, you and you alone have a biggest problem. And you have to focus your skincare on your biggest problem knowing how to tailor that problem throughout the decades. Hopefully that makes sense. So in my 20s, the biggest mistakes that I've made, honestly, and I do have to thank going to medical school that for saving my skin is I didn't have a consistent skincare routine, believe it or not. I hardly wore sunscreen every single day because I was locked up in a library from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and I was not sitting by any window. I may or may not have washed my face at night because I didn't wear makeup and I was sitting all day studying by uh, my books, but that doesn't mean that crud and gunk and oil were not accumulating on my face. In fact, I used to have a ton of whiteheads right here because I would always do this. And I used to go for facials to try to extract them. And the last time I had a facial was probably when I was 20 or 21. And I would do that to extract these whiteheads because that was when I was studying at my peak doing this for 12 hours a day. But the reality is, if you modify your behaviors and if you start with a solid skincare routine at this decade, your skin will thank you for it. And you will be way ahead of the curve compared to your peers and myself included. With that being said, the two biggest things I think you guys should really do is number one, wash your face at night. And if you do wear makeup, take your makeup off at night. And number two, definitely, definitely, definitely wear the damn sunscreen because it's a habit that will be hard to break once you're older and if you get used to it in your 20s. Skincare concerns in your 20s. There are really three big ones. Number one, acne. Yes, teenage acne is usually done around 17, 18 years old, but it can pick back up in your late 20s, believe it or not, and for some people it just continues throughout. There's a lot of hormonal shifts that happen in our 20s and it shows up on our skin. Number two, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. We start to realize that the little bumps that were kind of popping, little pimples were popping on our face are leaving marks on our face, also known as PIH or PIE, post-inflammatory erythema. And they can leave lingering residual effects on our skin that don't make us look as even or as fresh as we wanna be. And number three, oiliness or dryness. Because again, our hormones are shifting. You're trying to figure out your skin type, but, not many people talk about the environment. And in your 20s, you're probably moving around from your home to university, to your first job, to your first love, to a cross country, to follow your dreams. And you may be shifting environments. The air in Utah killed my soul and my face. It is extremely dry. The air in Florida is extremely humid. You being a dry person in Florida versus a dry person in Utah is very different. So understanding your environment and how your environment affects your skin is key. Because once you know that, for the rest of your life, you're gonna know how to add and how to remove products from your routine. And the products that you're adding and removing are the hydrating ones, from the mists to the serums to the moisturizers. But the foundation is gonna remain the same more or less, depending on what your biggest problem is. So starting with cleansing your face. This is one that can be pretty universal for most people in their 20s. Like I said, get your makeup off. I don't like oil cleansers. Some people love an oily balm. Um, Clinique's Take the Day Off is a classic. I love Bioderma. This is a mini micellar water that I travel with. I actually put this in a like I've done this before a million times, a spritzer. I feel like I get way more mileage out of it this way by spraying it on my face and then taking the cotton and breaking up my makeup. But I always start with Bioderma. Love this one. Number two, you go in with a cleanser, a very basic cleanser. 
The most basic I have been using is Vanna Cream. It burns my eyes, I'm not gonna lie, and it doesn't get the makeup off great on its own, but it's not expensive and it does the job. If you have active acne and you're extremely oily, maybe a couple of times a week when you wash your face at night, you want to use benzoyl peroxide. This is Penoxyl at 10%. The percentage of the benzoyl peroxide doesn't really actually matter. Anywhere from 5 to 10%, you're going to get more or less the same effects. But when you put this on your face, let it sit on your face before washing it off. Note to the wise, it will bleach your towels, hence why I only ever have white towels. And number two, if you don't want to do it at night because you shower in the morning, maybe then keep it in your shower, apply it to your face while you're washing your body, and then wash your face last. This way, you run less risk of bleaching your towels. Sulfur washes, I recently, I don't know how made this one go viral, but it's a sulfur wash by Kate Somerville. If you have extremely oily skin and benzoyl peroxide dries you out too much, a sulfur cleanser is also another option for you to put on your face. So that is the cleanser stage. Now we talk about exfoliating in our 20s. In your 20s, you're really not building up so much throughout the day and your cellular tone turnover is pretty fast still. You don't have to use something extremely strong and that's why I'm not going to talk about Pillow Talk Germs Flash Mask, which is a 15% glycolic acid. This is very strong. Instead, you want to go lighter and probably two or three times a week. When it is drier out, you might want to increase the frequency to maybe four times a week. When it's more humid, two times a week and in between three times a week. The Ordinary, and I had it here, I don't know where it is, has a glycolic acid peel at 7%. It is relatively low. It's not going to break your bank. It's 13 bucks. You will be fine. Bubble has an AHA PHA mask for 18 bucks. This one is interesting because it's a combination of glycolic lactic mandelic and glucanolactone. Now, the fact that they don't disclose the percentage sometimes makes me think that it's relatively low, although Pillow Talk Germ in, in general does not disclose percentages because I didn't want you guys to start just focusing on percentages alone. So you have to understand that it's not always the case. But Bubble is a brand that I think of when I think of younger generation. You can leave this one on for 10 or 15 minutes. It's very light. If you're sensitive, I would try this one because it has glucanolactone. Moving on to mists. This one is a good category for people who are acne prone or people who are very dry. Start off with Tower 28. This is a hypochlorous acid spray that you can spray on your face throughout the day. If you're wearing a headset, for example, at work, you can spray it kind of on your headset just to make sure you're killing all the bacteria. If you're acne prone, it's a great one to use throughout the day. At the height of the pandemic, I would spray it in my mask throughout the day to help minimize any breakouts. The other mist that I'm going to talk about is my glycerin-based mist, which we will link it below. But I mix glycerin with rose water and I put it in a little misting device. I have a bunch of these that I buy from Amazon because I lose them and they're so dirt cheap. But a misting device like this. So if you're very dry, you can put this solution of glycerin, rose water, or not rose water, just regular water in this. Note to the wise, only make the right amount because you don't want to be using this day over day over day because there's no preservatives so it can go bad. So just make enough for that day and keep it in your bag or by your desk and use it throughout the day, especially if you're in an office building that's very dry. Now, serums. The serums that we're going to incorporate into our routine are going to be problem focused. If you are oily and have acne prone skin, I really do like this one by Glossier. It's their super pure clarifying niacinamide and zinc as 5% niacinamide and zinc PCA to help balance the shine on your face and the oiliness on your face while minimizing the inflammation. Yes, it comes in a dropper, but a little bit of this goes a very long way and it retails for 29 bucks. Then if you are red or puffy, I'm obsessed with my own Allure winning, best winning depuffer, Arnica Rolling Serum. I created this for people who were doing procedures in the office who swell or have inflammation and redness, especially like Sculptra, which is a procedure we can talk about another day, because you have to massage your face after the treatment. But then I also realized that the Arnica, as well as the combination of ingredients that I put in here, helps a lot with redness, and we did an independent clinical study to see if it reduces the look of redness, which it does when used twice a day over the course of a month. And we also did a study to look at eye puffiness within five minutes, and it does reduce the look of puffiness. So every morning when I wake up, I put this on my eyes to give this effect. Believe it or not, I had a crap ton of salt last night, 
and my finger I still cannot fit my Ura ring into because my fingers are swollen, but my eyes look pretty damn good. I'm faking it till I make it. This is a great product. Because I made it, I am biased, full disclosure, but genuinely, I mean, Allure voted it uh, best of beauty, won an award. So that is the depuffer. And then in your 20s, it is time to introduce a vitamin C into your routine. We don't have to go crazy, right? And because you're usually not so well off in your 20s, SkinCeuticals, yeah, it's great, but it costs a lot of money. But Timeless has really good vitamin C products, okay? These are 10% ascorbic acid as well as a 20% and I always confuse them. The orange one is the 10 and the yellow one is the 20. I always think this should be the 10 and that should be the 20 because it's darker, it's more saturated, but they did the opposite. It's in a pump, it smells exactly the same. It smells like hot dogs, it looks orangey amber, it stinks. It comes in an opaque pump, which I prefer to a dropper, even though I know that a pump and a dropper both get a little bit of air in it. I still think the pump is overall better. That retails for 24 bucks. Then we have retinols. Retinols are not gonna be for everyone. You may have dipped your toes in the retinol games in your teens when you had comedonal acne like blackheads and whiteheads. And if you haven't, retinols might sound scary to you. But not all retinols are created equal and that is why I personally did not include any retinol in the major fade line. Instead, when you're using a retinol, you have to know the type of retinol and the percentage in order to really know how to titrate it for your skin. So. For very, very beginners, people who just want to try it out, Glossier, they have a $35, 0.5% pro retinol, which is a little misleading because it's not even a retinol. It's a hybrid of retinol and sunflower seed fatty acids, but it's retinol sunflower rates. It's extremely light. It's very, very, very gentle. This is exactly how much you need to use on your face. Like I'm going to show you that. Pea size amount is what you need. Poop, 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 poop. Kind of be careful around here because this area can always get irritated, but that's pretty much all you need. A good one to start with. You probably want to start using this like three nights a week and then see how you tolerate it and add a night. Now, if you want to try something a little bit stronger, I really do like e.l.f. They have their Gran Active Retinoid as well as 0.06% retinal and antioxidants in it. The Gran Active Retinoid is hydroxyphenicolone retinoate, okay? And it is a cousin of the active form of retinol, also known as tretinoin. So studies are saying that it is almost as effective as the active form, although it is not technically the active form, and it is not as irritating. So this is a really nice one for you guys to try. It is not expensive, it is 22 bucks. It is also great for beginners. If you're in your 20s and you've never used a retinol in your teens, definitely I think you need to be sticking to this until you can tolerate it every night of the week without any irritation. Consistency over intensity is the name of the game and once you get flaky, red and irritated, you know you've gone too far and you gotta take a step back because the, the inflammation is what's going to kill your skin in the long run. Moving on to eye creams. You don't really need them, okay? Not at this age. If you're able to tolerate this, Take a tiny dab, put it underneath your eyes, buffer it with moisturizer, meaning put moisturizer first and then the retinol. If you're really puffy, you can use the deep puffer around your eyes and lock it in with a thicker moisturizer as well. You don't really need a specific eye cream at this stage of the game because again, you're not really dry, meaning you still have relatively good oil production. And if you're dehydrated, meaning you're lacking water content in your skin, you can use a thicker moisturizer or lock it in with Vaseline. I'm not sponsored by Vaseline. I've never been. I've never done pay to play. They've never paid me. But you can use Vaseline under your eyes. If you're prone to comedones, which are the tiny little milia, whiteheads that are firm, tiny cysts, you may not want to use this under your eyes. Instead, use a nicer moisturizer, something that's more breathable. But it doesn't mean you need a specific eye cream or you have to spend uh, which I will show you guys, a couple hundred bucks for a tiny little thing of La Mer. Is this even their eye cream? I don't even know, but it's tiny, okay? So yeah, you don't need to do that. Moving on to moisturizer. Again, moisturizers tailor it to your climate. If you're in a dry climate, you want to layer something that is like a hydrating mist, a hydrating serum, and a hydrating moisturizer. If you're in a oily, humid climate. I always call humid climates oily climates. You want to pair it back. You don't need something so thick. But I love moisturizers that do two in ones because I don't have time in the morning, despite the fact that I'm recording this video before running to work at 7 a.m. 
This is mine. It is a vitamin C moisturizer. It has a vitamin C ester in it, not ascorbic acid, so it won't go rancid like the ascorbic acid will, but it's not as active as the active form of vitamin C. However, I use it twice a day, every single day, since August of 2021 when I approved the formula. This is my favorite vitamin C moisturizer, but it's also my favorite moisturizer for most skin types because it is a lightweight gel moisturizer. It's extremely light. It's not going to suffocate your skin. So if you are dry in a dry climate, it might not be enough. And that's why you should use something thicker like Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream on top of it, which is a basic moisturizer. There aren't actives in here to really lock it in. My moisturizer retails for 58 bucks. Again, if you buy it, you don't need a vitamin C. You've saved yourself that step and you can use another serum to target another issue. Otherwise, Bioma has a very basic gel moisturizer, which is $15. There's nothing in here like vitamin C, but it's a gel moisturizer, lightweight enough to keep you hydrated. So if you need an extra layer of hydration, this one can get you going. It's almost a hybrid between a serum and a moisturizer, if I'm being honest, versus the Kiehl's, which is a really good thicker moisturizer. So those are moisturizers. And last, we have sunscreens. Sunscreens are gonna be the staple of your routine. Get used to using it in your 20s. La Roche-Posay, if you're really dry in a dry climate, is great. They have their double repair face moisturizer with ceramides. It retails for 23 bucks. It's SPF 30. Super Goop has their Play um, SPF 50 if you want something stronger. If you live more in the southern hemispheres or closer to the equator, you probably need something SPF 50 every single day. Look at the UV index on your iPhone. Anything above three means you definitely need to be wearing sunscreen that day. If you are somebody who lives in a northern hemisphere, the UV index is relatively low. You don't wanna wear a sunscreen per se every day because it burns your eyes. This one miraculously does not burn my eyes and I use it every day as a makeup base. It is their Laura Mercier. It is a chemical sunscreen of SPF 25 or SPF 30, depending on which one you have. I put two full fingers under my makeup and I go. I love it, it's hydrating and it does give you a nice base. And then there's the Super Goop Glow Screen, which I use as a highlighter on the high cheeks of my face. I love it because it gives you, it makes you feel like a disco ball. Can't tolerate it all over my face, it does burn my eyes. So with that said, this was your skincare for your 20s. I hope you learned a lot through the pearls. I hope you learned through my mistakes. If I could turn back time, I do wish I got into the routine of using sunscreen more and washing my face more. Although I do think I got very lucky that I was out of the sun and in a library for that decade. Believe it or not, the, really the whole decade. So that was what saved my skin, but not everybody has that luxury of being stuck in a library in their 20s. So get used to wearing sunscreen and washing your face. And if you are studying, just don't do what I used to do. Worse in my crease and I had a lot of whiteheads and the facials only helped temporarily and it didn't stop until I stopped that behavior. Anyway, have a beautiful Saturday. I will catch you guys next week.